This was going to be my favorite video. I was so excited <clears throat> to get into it. And then my phone cut me off at six minutes. So. And the thing is, I had already gotten like halfway through the introduction e part. <sighs> I'm so upset. And I probably should just turn this off and not do it. But you know what? I don't care. We're going to do it anyway. Okay. Fuck. Wilson Fisk is the worst person ever. And here's why. He is a crime lord. He says he wants to make the city better. He doesn't. He doesn't actually care. Anyway, the show makes you care about him because they have characters like Wesley and Vanessa who are his friends slash lover and he makes it makes you care about Vanessa. It makes you want him to be with Vanessa because he feels better when he's with her and he doesn't hold on to his trauma so much around her, which is really great. He killed his dad with a hammer because he was beating his mom up. You know, stuff like that. Karen tries to use it against him despite not knowing the whole story. And I think that's kind of shitty of her because she doesn't really know why he would kill his dad at 12. Anyway, so that's out of the way. Marvel doesn't usually try to humanize their villains. Why? Because they, they're so stupid. And the only time I can think of them actually successfully humanizing a villain is in Captain Marvel with Talos. So, they tried to with Thanos. It sucked. Alright, there you go. Matt freaking hates this guy because he put him in jail once when he still cared and believed in things. Then season three was awful and he went through so much crap that he decided that he was actually done trying to put this idiot in jail and he was going to kill him. Okay. That's the short version of what I said in the other video I recorded. Okay. Um. <sighs> he realized that Fisk had a way of manipulating not only police officers but the FBI, as we see, um, into giving him exactly what he wants. So he makes sure the law is on his side so he gets away with everything. Um. Matt wanted to kill him. He was prepared to cross that line. And obviously, like I said in the previous video, Foggy was the one who pulled him back. He was like, you can't do that, man. We'll, we'll get him the right way. You just don't worry about it. That did not work out. Uh, Agent Nadim got, you know, assassinated and Grand Jury got contaminated, so his testimony was void. Luckily, he recorded a video of himself saying it. Um, so, yeah, okay. They put that on the internet, and it threw him down. But the final battle is the main point of this. Matt has been grappling with whether or not he should kill Fisk for the entire season. And he he really wants to do it, right? And there's a scene in The Punisher, he was like, look, you know, to it wasn't about Fisk, it was about somebody else, but he told uh, Frank, he was like, look, I <laughs> He had to do the thing. I was like, I don't care if you kill him. Just, I'll let you do it this time because I can't handle this. And he starts to realize that, you know, not killing people is really difficult. And it would be so much easier to do it, right? So much easier. And I mentioned the final battle in the other video about Dex. Um, so, the final battle comes down to Matt versus Dex versus Fisk versus Matt. Like, it's a three-way freaking brawl with Vanessa just, like, in the middle of it for some reason. She can't leave. Um, so, the way that Matt overcomes his urges is because, like, Fisk, he beats the crap out of him. Okay, and I gotta talk about the painting. So there's this painting. It's literally just, like, white background. It literally is the most bland thing ever which is called Rabbit in a Snowstorm, which is supposed to be, like, a joke, because it's just a blank white canvas thing. I mean, there's paint on it, and it's not just white. There's, like, splotches, but it's it's not a good painting. I would not pay as much money for it. It's also really big. Anyway. So, Wilson finds it at an art gallery, and Vanessa works there, so she's the one who sells it to him. And he asks her out on a date, so she goes on a date with him. And then that date gets interrupted by that Russian guy, Victor... Vlad, whatever his name was. And, um, so he bashes his head in with Cardor. This is season one, by the way. Yada, yada, yada. Fisk goes to jail, sends Vanessa to Europe to be safe. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, the painting is this whole thing. Anyway, like I said, Dex gets in the painting back. And he hangs it up in this hotel that he now lives at because he got out of prison. He owns the hotel and he lives in the penthouse. Why not? You know? Um, 
So he finally has his painting back of Vanessa and everything. And everything's going his way. He's getting married to her. It's great. Except, um, Matt has had it. So, and Dex also had it. So they show up in their respective Daredevil outfits to beat the crap out of this guy. Dex wants to kill him. Dex gets thrown into a wall and paralyzed. He's out. Um, Matt shows up and Fisk puts up a fight, but Matt has absolutely, he's unhinged, so he beats him. But the interesting part isn't even, like, their actual fight. It's when Fisk is literally on his knees, covered in his own blood, staring up at Matt, and he says, if you don't kill me, I will kill Foggy, I'll kill Karen, I'll kill everybody you care about, I will ruin your life, I will tell everyone who you are, you have no option. Just do it. Don't be a coward. And he literally, again, like I said, has his hands on his head like he's going to snap his neck. And then he puts his hands on his shoulder and just goes, Ah! You know? And he says, I am not going to kill you. God knows I want to, but I won't do it. You are not going to take who I am away from me. You're not going to make me do this. I hate you. I really want to kill you, but I'm not going to do it. And the quote is my favorite thing. It says, you don't get to destroy who I am. It's beautiful. There are people outside my door. And then, um, I'm not super excited for this. I thought I would be. Anyway, but Matt, you know, he makes the decision not to kill Fisk because he wants him to suffer for what he did. And he wants the law to beat him because it would be the right thing. Killing Fisk would give him what he wanted, right? He wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to cross a line that he knew he could never come back from for some asshole, right? And this is, the scene is really good where he's punching him and his blood just sprays all over the back of the canvas. It's awesome. And Vanessa, he stopped beating him when Vanessa starts crying and telling him, begging him to stop, right? And he realizes that he's, literally, he really easily could kill him at this point. But he won't do it. And there's a scene after he yells at Fisk, and he tells him, You will go back to jail. And you will live the rest of your miserable life in a cage, knowing that this city rejected you. It beat you. I beat you, and you will never have Vanessa, and you will never have what you want, and nothing is ever going to go your way. You are going to jail, and that is what's going to happen, and you will stay there, so help me God, or she is going to get hurt. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. I love that. Um, anyway, the... I've lost my train of thought. He beat Fisk through the law, which was something that Fisk had shown that he's very easy, he can very easily manipulate, which is very interesting, and I think that was good. And I feel like the way that they portrayed this battle and this moment was really good. But after he gives the speech, he screams really loud a lot. Right? Why would he do that? He's mad. There's a theme throughout season three, where, especially with Dex and Fisk, where Fisk talks to Dex and he tells him, you know, um, he's like, you can't just have rage. It's got to go somewhere. I find that a primal scream is what helps me. And so in that scene, Dage is obviously, Dage, Dex is very, obviously very upset, so he screams and Fisk hugs him. Why? This is a very weird show. Um, and there's other scenes where Dex just, like, goes off on his own to scream into the void because he's frustrated. The same thing happens with Fisk a lot, too. Uh, so when Matt does it, it sort of plays on that, um, too. And again, this is just, this is the best, like, final moment. And I know Daredevil's getting renewed, but, like, I feel like this was peak Marvel, peak Daredevil. This is not... I don't think anything they make is going to be as good as this season. 
and especially Matt's character development after, when he decides to not cut his friends off, and he decides to not shun his mom, and he decides to, I would have, but he decides to, like, and he tells Foggy, he's like, hey, let's give, let's give being lawyers another try. You were right. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so they make Nelson and Murdoch again, except this time with Karen. So it's Nelson, Murdoch, and Paige. It's nice. And she's like, I'm not a lawyer, though. And they're like, eh, we'll find something for you to do. You're, you're, she did more work than they ever did. So, you know, whatever. Um, he topples Fisk's empire by putting him back in jail and making sure he stays there. Right? And his whole thing is that he knows that Vanessa also was part of this. Because she's not just Fisk's girlfriend, wife, whatever. No, she's also helping him run this operation at this point. And he tells him, look, I will tell them what she did if you set foot out of line, basically. Which is why I hate Hawkeye. Okay, Hawkeye makes me so upset because it is, right, because it's the same kingpin. It's the same guy. And it pisses me off because what is he doing out of jail? And where is Vanessa? Is Vanessa in jail? Is that what happened? Either way, this bitch should be there too. What the fuck? And, you know, Matt Murdock is also in the MCU because Hawkeye and Spider-Man take place, like, at the same time, right? And Matt is in Spider-Man, and then, you know, Wilson is in Hawkeye. And it, it confuses me because why is he not in jail? Okay, yes, maybe, it's been a few years, you know, maybe the snap thing messed it up, maybe, like, Matt got dusted, right? That's why he wasn't around. That's why he was, like, and they didn't know that they were coming back, so Fisk took the opportunity to get out of jail, and now Matt is going to put him back. But if they do that, and that's the plot of Daredevil Season 4 or whatever, I'm so mad, because the point of Daredevil was that we put... Kingpin back in jail for good and we don't see him again. He's out of the picture now. Bullseye's the villain. What on earth are they trying to do? Huh? Are they trying to tie it all together in the sloppiest way imaginable? Because I feel like that's what they're trying to do. And look, Hawkeye's not a bad show. It's great. Why did we have to fo- Why? Okay, her mom was the villain more so than that. And I know, he gets shot at the end. Oh, but do you know what I fully, fully believe happened? Because it sees him with his hands up and Maya pointing the gun at him. And it pans up, and then we hear the gunshot and see the flash and everything. And then it fades to black, and then fades back into whatever happens next. And the... And everybody's like, he's, there's no way he's dead. What I think happened is, um, you know how in Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Barbosa points the gun at Elizabeth, and we just see her, like, freeze, because, oh my god, there's a gun on me. And then we hear the gunshot, and her face, her eyes widen. Right? Like, she got shot, but then we pan over and see that Barbosa is bleeding. And Jack is standing there with this, like, look on his face, like, is he actually gonna die? And, anyway, I could get into that scene, but it, it, I feel like it's a fake-out thing, like that. Right? Like, somebody definitely came up behind Maya and shot her. That's what happened. Obviously. She's out. Fisk is not gonna die. There's no way. Also, if he was, that would not be how. It's just like Electra, right? We don't see the body, she ain't dead. He ain't dead. No body, he ain't dead. Uh, that's how it goes. Every time. If there's not a body, they're not dead. Easy. You know? Like, and people are still not sure whether or not Nat is actually dead. And you know what I feel like Marvel could do? Easily? Bring back Nat. You could do that so easy. Right? You did the Hawkeye thing, you did the, you got Yelena in it, right? You did the Black Widow movie, um... I'm going to be very honest, there could have been three Black Widow movies already. Right? Right, because after Iron Man 2, we could have gotten, or even before that, around that time, before Avengers, around Iron Man 2, we could have gotten her origin, right? Because she was in Iron Man 2. We could have gotten her origin story in one movie, how she met Clint, because they never go into that one. And, you know, how she met Clint how she grew up and everything, and everything about that, who Yelena is, we could have gotten all of that stuff in the first frigging phase of the MCU, but we didn't. And then the second one could have been her in hiding with, you know, 
Cap and Sam and all them guys, Scott and all those people, right, after Civil War. And then the third movie could have come out when Black Widow came out and it could have finished her story. Or we could have gotten, like, another movie after Avengers of her doing her own thing, right? Like Thor and Iron Man got, wait, did Thor get that? Yeah, like Thor and Iron Man got, you know, and then had her die in Endgame. And then have a third one with her with uh, Cap and them, and then have her die in Endgame, right? It could have worked. And, oh, and given her a real funeral instead of a bench thrown in a lake. Come on. And Steve crying over a woman that he never banged. Like, what on earth was that movie? Endgame? S Infinity War? Slapped. It's good. It's great. And then, I don't know what happened to Endgame. That was just a disgrace. Idiotic. Because there's no way, there's no reason why Steve would be such a man whore for Bucky for two movies. And then, just like freaking dip on him the last second for a woman that he kissed one time that had actually moved on from him. And that he had literally told himself that he didn't actually care anymore. Right? Because he knew how her life played out. It was very well documented, right? He read about it. He met her as an old woman. And I feel like what they should have done, if they really wanted to do the dance thing, this is what they should have done. They should have had a scene in one of the other Captain America movies, other Winter Soldier or whatever, um, where him and where he, like, dances with Peggy, even though she's old. That would have been really sweet and cute, you know? I feel like they should have done that instead, and it would have been a better close. And Steve should have come back and retired and gave this shield to Sam anyway, but also so he could just not have to be Captain America anymore and go back to living in Brooklyn and doing whatever it is he wants to do, right? Being retired and being like, no, no, it's not me anymore. It's, it's Sam. He's my buddy. He's good, you know? Stuff like that. Anyway, this is not about Captain America. This is about Daredevil. <laughs> but this is way shorter than I thought it would be because I spent a lot of time talking about it when I recorded this first time. But the way that the final battle goes, it is so amazing. And it just... Matt really realizes who he was... What, was, what he was doing wrong. And why he couldn't kill Fisk. And why that was the right thing to do. And he came overcame the urge to murder the guy that ruined, or tried to ruin his life. And, you know, just by following the law and doing what was right instead. I think that's very nice. And smart. And cool. And awesome. And I love it. <laughs> um, okay. I think I have a couple more things I wanted to mention. Ugh. No, I do not. Okay, well, that concludes my Daredevil series. This video is slightly different and not as excitable and mostly rambling about other Avengers. So, not what I had in mind for our final part, but you know what? I don't care. I basically got all the excitement out on my Dex and Matt video. So, um, yeah. I could do more of these. I really like Marvel. I think that Marvel is overrated. Uh, that's mean. No, I feel like Marvel is what it is, you know? You, you really get what you sign up for with that. Superhero movies, right? And that's why I think that Daredevil stands out so much, is because it's not like Marvel. Right? Matt's not a jerk. I hope that... Well, I'm really hungry. But, um, and Matt's not like a jerk who gets schooled because of something traumatic like Thor or Iron Man, he's not, he's interesting, or he's not like a guy who, or he's not like D Deadpool, where he wants to just like, like he does the right thing because he's being forced to by the X-Men, you know, like, he does whatever because he has, he really cares about people. He has a lot of faith in people. He wants to help people. And he knows that the law isn't always going to help them. So he takes it into his own hands. And he's different from people like Batman, who's not Marvel, but still. 
who don't kill people because it would weigh on their conscience too much, he also is doing everything on his own, right? He doesn't have money or Alfred. He's not... He... The only reason he gets a cool suit is because he finds the guy that makes Fisk's body armor stuff that he wears under his clothing. And, you know, basically talks him into doing it. And, you know, that falls through pretty frickin' quickly, so... Okay, not really. He doesn't stick to the suit for very long. He wears it in season two, and then in season three, he's like... Doesn't use it at all. So, you know. Anyway... Yeah, so this is just sort of a, like, final thoughts. Final thoughts, best Marvel show ever. You cannot change my mind. I said that's the title. That's what it's always going to be. Um, I liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I love that one. Um, I like that it actually talked about things. And my dad hated it, so that means it's good. Uh, Hawkeye, disappointing. Kate, Kate's cool. The rest of it's kind of lame. I like Christmas, though, so it was fun to have an action thing that wasn't Die Hard for Christmas. Um, what else? Uh, you know, there's the... Man, WandaVision was pretty good, but it wasn't super interesting. Okay. WandaVision was interesting, but it wasn't super exciting, you know? Like, Marvel's shows are just not it. And, you know, stuff like Iron Fist, like, why? It just sort of goes in a weird direction. Punisher, boring, you know, I can't get into it, right? Like, Luke Cage, I don't care, you know? <laughs> like, stuff like that, it just wasn't interesting or captivating to me at all. Jessica Jones, she pisses me off, you know? Like, what am I supposed to be getting out of this? Anyway, I just don't think that Marvel has ever made another show like Daredevil, and they never will again, you know? And it's gonna be really weird if they try to do Daredevil like they've been doing their other shows because there's no way it's going to work if they do it like that. And the last thing I want is for Daredevil to go the way of Supernatural, right? Starts out really good, got really promising, and then they just sort of beat it to death either by dragging it out for so long or giving it to people who don't know how to do it and ruining it that way. So, we'll see how that works out. And we'll see what happens. Okay. Goodbye.